So uh, what we've got here, this is the Meccano Martian mission um, based on the um, Atari computer arcade game from 1979 called Lunar Lander. And it basically does the same thing. It's got most of the features from the original game. Um, we have a landing craft up here which moves up and down vertically. This is the Martian landscape which gives you the horizontal motion. Um, at the moment we're in uh, low Earth orbit or low Mars orbit so we've got automatic motion to, in this direction. As you start to descend that motion is phased out and then you're relying on your thrust to give you horizontal motion. Um, so at the moment we uh, um, haven't started the game. To begin the game we press the start button. That gives us control of the ship and it also begins the descent. And uh, we have two modes. We're in Earth mode at the moment, so the gravity is a lot stronger, comes down a lot faster. The uh, two controls we've got is the rotate control, which moves your ship left or right to allow you to uh, direct the thrust whichever way you want to go. This is your thrust lever, which gives you a little uh, yellow flame underneath the ship every time you use thrust. The other thing we've got at the moment, we're in practice mode, so we're not using up time, we're not using up fuel. So we're going to go for this uh, nice big safe landing zone here, which is relatively easy to land on. And just control my descent. Oop, make sure I'm upright. And, and I crashed because I was tilted over too far. So we get a crash banner come down. So. That's, that's it, a failed mission <laughs> on my first attempt. I'll power you up, okay? The planet will start to go round, nothing happens, you've got no controls until you press the start button. As soon as you press the start button, you start to come down and you've got controls. So I have to try and land on the green? Anywhere where there's a green strip, yeah? Okay. There's plenty right, of them. Then. Would you like to have a practice mission first of all? Yeah. Unlimited okay. time. Unlimited fuel. Okay. okay. Right then, so I'll just power you up. There we go. As soon as you're ready, press the start button. I would be moving to the right. The rotate control is a bit sticky, it should um, stop moving when you take your hand off it. It's not doing that. Stop. It's looking good. Yeah, stop. Yeah, the other like thing it. I forgot to tell you is you need to be upright to land safely. It's looking good. Yeah. And, and also just give yourself a little blip of throttle before you hit the ground to slow your descent down. A little bit more. See the crash warning light in front of you on the gauge. Oh, just came down a little bit too fast. So now he knows what to do. So uh, a little bit more on the on the control side then. So at the moment we're in practice mode with unlimited time, unlimited fuel. So we go to mission mode now. So this time when we press the start button, the timer starts to go down. We've got three minutes. Uh, and every time you use thrust, the fuel gauge will go down. You get about 90 seconds of fuel. So not a lot. Um, 90 seconds of fuel, probably quite realistic for the original um, moon landing missions. They had very little fuel um, to get themselves down onto the moon. And uh, right, let's give it a go. And down we, down we come. So I can fly to the left, fly to the right. Now I'm using thrust, the fuel gauge is, is going down. We'll head back that way again. And try and get back to that safe zone. You notice I'm going for the easy landing zone so <laughs> to give myself a fighting chance. In this mode, because you're coming down quite fast with the gravity, you need to, uh, as well as make sure that your ship is upright, 
and you have to slow your descent to uh, ensure that you're coming down at a safe speed. If this red warning light is on, that means that you're going to crash. Had I managed to land safely, you get a, a, a land batter comes down instead. That's a successful mission. And then from there, we calculate the score by adding up the time remaining, the fuel remaining, add those two together and multiply it by the, the um, multiplier value on the base. So uh, 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 the harder it is to land on a base, the higher the score um, gives you a, a, a larger multiplying factor. So after each mission, I have to reset the game to, to start a new mission. It's a little bit of a complex affair to be able to, to do it automatically. It would be nice if I could just press a reset button and it sorts itself out. But uh, there's, there's two involved to do that, so I have to reset the game manually. So I uh, come round here, and the first thing I have to do is um, reset the vertical motion. So I can disconnect the drive at the back, and then I can lift it up manually back into orbit. Uh, and then I've got to reset the banner. So we have a, a quick blip of the power to reset the uh, release mechanism, pop that back up there on the catch, and now we're ready to go again. So we come back round for a, another mission. So I've got to reset the gauges as well. Back to zero, or back to 100%, and now we're ready to kick off again. Oh. At each corner of the game, just a quick, quick moment there, I've got a panic button on each on each corner, so if anything does go catastrophically wrong, which does happen from time to time, you can just bang one of those switches and everything stops, um, and we can save the day. <laughs> but uh, it's a useful um, method of just turning off the power anyway. So uh, we're back ready to start another mission. We're going to press start. Down we come. Uh, again, we're in Earth gravity on this mission, so we come down quite fast. We'll go for a, a harder landing zone this time. Let's go for number four here, in a little steep valley. I'm not even sure it's physically possible to get in there without touching the mountain slopes, but <laughs> we'll soon find out. Of course, you can bring yourself down a lot quicker as well by pointing the ship towards the floor and using your thrust. And uh, down we come at a high rate of knots. Let's shift over a little bit, down we go. Come on, let's do it. No, <laughs> failed, failed miserably, crashed and burned. <laughs> right, so we're going to full mission mode now then, yeah? Okay. So when I press this, I think you're a wait, bit too so like to move to the side. No, this doesn't move to the side. What happens is if you, if you point your ship that way, then the landscape will move this way. So it looks oh, like you're flying that way. I that makes sense, yeah? <laughs> okay, so. Alright, whenever you're ready. The crash warning light's on. It's not. It's red. Oh yeah, but I mean that's that's now. So if I go this way. Where are you gonna land it? Yeah. Slowing. Slowing. Do you understand me about yes, going left and right, it means the landscape's slower the more you go one way or another. We're going to try and land it, Ted. Another short bit of flat surface. Going for the green. It's a hard one. It is a hard one. Now we'll be going for the one. He likes a challenge, doesn't he? I'm going to try to see. You better have to stop moving. Yeah, you're not going to do it, Ted. Give me some thrust. That's it, yeah. Stop. Keep going. I'm going to go for that. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's an easier one. That's a safe bet for a first mission, I think, yeah. Good <laughs> space to land. Um, I would right, now you can do it. Turn it round the other way, Ted. That goes completely. That's it. Stop, stop, stop. Now remember, you've got to slow your descent. 
Are you near the end though? Oh yeah, not yet. It's, not, it's fast rolling lights like, got off, which is good. It's going to break like slow. It'll be okay. Yeah, it's looking good. Keep an eye on that crap. I'll tell you, you and... Yeah. You should be okay on Mars. You can just uh, come down safely without using your thrust. And if you use too much thrust, you'll end up going back up again. <laughs> looking good. Looking Still good. green. Looking good. So it's looking good. Here we go. Here it comes. Touchdown. Yay. Yes. Well done. Okay, I'm Three. Yeah, so I, I started this project about 10 years ago and um, probably spent a good eight or nine months just thinking of the concept and what it would need to do and how on earth I was going to um, get the model to do various aspects. Um, and uh, there are several different variations of, of mechanisms that I tried, um, different sort of uh, formats for the, the landscape and different types of platform for the, the lander to go up and down on. They all failed miserably. And I have to be honest, I nearly gave up the whole project two or three times over the years. Uh, but I persevered and we came to the current design. And uh, this is the first time it's actually worked reasonably well. Although it looks pretty complicated, it, there's not a lot going on it at the back here. But the model basically works from two basic motions, the vertical motion, um, which has the, the ship attached to it and then the horizontal motion which is the landscape. Um, each of those basic motions has two drive inputs. Um, so if we start with the vertical motion, um, on the far side there is the gravity motor which goes through a two-speed gearbox that gives you earth gravity and Mars gravity. That feeds into a central differential to drive the ship down. On the other side here is a variable speed drive unit which is linked into your thrust lever and, um, and is operated um, from the thrust depending on the attitude of the ship. So if the ship is pointing straight up or straight down then thrust will activate this drive unit on the top here and that will feed into the other side of the differential to the back to counteract gravity um, uh, or work with gravity if you're pointing the ship to, down towards the ground. The horizontal motion works in a similar way, two speed inputs. The first uh, motor uh, on this gearbox here, this is what I call the orbit motor. So when the ship is at high altitude, this motor runs and continuously drives the landscape in one direction. And as the ship descends, the speed of that motor is phased out gradually as you enter the um, atmospheric drag of the planet. So the second input, which also feeds into a differential on the back here, is another variable speed drive unit, identical to the, the, hot, the vertical one. Uh, works in exactly the same way, and that is also controlled by thrust lever movements. Uh, and that will activate the, the landscape movement in one direction or the other, again, depending on the attitude of the ship. So the way all that is controlled is by a unit to the rear here, which is a little bit difficult to see, but this is basically the, um, the ship's attitude and control sensing unit. I said that wrong, it's not the control sensing unit, it's the attitude sensing and control unit. Um, so that basically detects which way the ship is pointing. There are um, three cams which operate a, a micro switch. The first two cams um, detect basic left or right orientation and up and down orientation and then the third cam detects when the ship is upright to give it a, a safe landing attitude and that feeds into the logic circuits to, 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 um, to tell the game that we're in a safe landing attitude and it will um, give the, the suitable response when you touch the ground. Um, so to get the, the distribution of thrust between vertical and horizontal there's a, a pair of sliding potentiometers at the back which are operated by a, a crank mechanism. So as the ship rotates the crank moves the, the sliding pots one opposed to the other and that will feed the thrust signal into either the vertical drive unit or the horizontal drive unit or um, evenly in between the two. 
and that will give you your, your thrust input to whichever um, motion is required depending on your ship's attitude. I hope all that makes sense. <laughs> it's a little bit complicated. Um, so that finally then, um, when the ship makes contact with the ground, that will short out a, a logic circuit and give you a suitable response. And the way that that works is that each segment of the landscape is um, connected to one of two sensing tracks. So behind here, you, you can see uh, there are two tracks. One is the crash track and the other one is the land track. Um, so each element of mountain, land, uh, mountain landscape, slope landscape is connected to the crash track and uh, all of the horizontal level safe landing zones, they are connected to the, the land track. So when you um, contact the ground with the ship, that will cir short circuit one of these two circuits, goes into the logic circuit, and that will give you a suitable response, either a crash banner or a land banner. And at the same time, it will disengage all drives and freeze the, freeze the game's motion. And the way it does that is um, in each of the, um, variable speed drive units we have an electromagnetic clutch you can just about see this one here for the horizontal motion so that is disengaged as soon as ground contact is made and the drive is um, frozen um, one of the many challenges uh, to this project was how to get the the lander ship to move up and down smoothly and be able to operate the rotation and the thrust flame regardless of altitude and regardless of attitude um, and in the early design methods that I tried the, <coughs> the, the mechanisms for detecting the position of the ship all this gubbins at the back here that was all mounted on the top of the platform so it all went up and down together but that was so heavy that it was just impossible to lift it up and down um, satisfactorily so it became clear that I needed to have all that mechanism on the, fixed to the ground and transmit the drive up to the ship uh, to keep the weight down as much as possible. So the next question with them was how do I get the drive from the ground base to the ship? And uh, so you can see that I've solved that by using a chain drive which is wrapped around this pantograph assembly uh, and that maintains the, the same tension uh, around the pantograph regardless of the altitude and so you can drive them from the the ground based motor here which drives the, uh, the the ground shaft to the bottom of the pantograph and transmits the, the drive up to the upper shaft to move the ship and uh, so the next problem then also was how to operate the the thrust flame which not only needed to work at any altitude uh, but also any attitude for the ship. So what we've got is, um, a, is a cable drive which is linked to the thrust lever on a bell crank, bell crank at the bottom here. So the cable drive comes up the side of the pantograph uh, into this, uh, uh, this socket coupling which allows a crank mechanism to be moved along the, um, the ship's mounting shaft to operate the flame and obviously the socket coupling will counteract uh, or, uh, allow that to happen uh, regardless of the rotational latitude of the ship and uh, that seems to work reasonably well.